One of the more common projects web designers take on are landing pages. And in the next few videos, we're gonna look at how they can easily be created using Adobe XD, and how you can even include and edit assets you've created in Photoshop. Personally speaking, once I wired up my first design in XD and saw how quick it was, especially when working with multiple screens at different sizes, I was hooked. In the next few videos, we're gonna cover wireframing, designing, including Photoshop integration, and sharing a landing page for an upcoming DJ, and you'll really start to see how XD and Photoshop can work hand in hand to speed up your workflow. When you first launch Adobe XD, you can immediately get your project started by selecting a preset, from phones to tablets to web, and even custom sizes. Because we're creating a landing page for the web, I'll start with a 1920 by 1080 pixel artboard. In the wireframing phase, we're going to keep things very simple, using basic shapes and text to create placeholders for our designs. Let's start with the background layer, which will house a full width image. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool from the left and draw out a box across my entire artboard. And then over to the right, I'll turn off the border and then change the color to a light gray. As you'll see in the next video, shapes in Adobe XD can double as masks for your images. I'm also going to make sure to name my layers to keep my project organized. The next element I want to block out is the navigation bar, which will extend across the top of the landing page. I can also use the rectangle tool for this, and I'll choose a slightly darker gray for the color just so I can see it against the background. On top of the navigation bar, we'll have a logo, also blocked in with a rectangle, and a few links over to the right. Back over with my tools, I'm going to grab the text tool, and then type out Home. Now we have a few options for the other links. We can duplicate each one or use a repeat grid. Since we have a little bit more control with a repeat grid, let's do that. Over to the right, hit that repeat grid button. You can also create one with the command or control R shortcut. Once created, you'll notice two new handles, one to the right and one at the bottom. This will let me pull out additional links for the navigation bar and then hovering and dragging in between any of them will allow me to adjust the spacing. Now I'm able to individually change the text on each link. This one will be Tours, About, and Contact. When creating text-based repeat grids, you may sometimes experience uneven spacing depending on the length of the text. Changing the justification to Centered usually helps a lot. In the next video, we'll focus a little bit more on styling our text, but before I move on, let me quickly name my layers and then I'll want to make sure that all the elements of my navigation bar are placed into a group. With the first layer selected, I can hold down my Shift key and then click on the last one to select them all, and then use the Command or Control G shortcut to create a group with all the selected layers. Great, that'll do it for the area above the fold, but what if you also wanted some content below that will be visible when you scroll down? Clicking on the artboard's name in either the Layers panel or directly on your document will reveal its handles, which can be pulled to increase the size, and in this case, we want to make it longer. You'll now see a blue handle to the left which indicates our fold. Any content above will be visible immediately, while everything below will be seen once scrolling begins. This section down here is going to contain additional information, such as events, so let's quickly block that out. Depending on your vision for the landing page, you may or may not need an additional background layer down at the bottom, but since we're going to be exploring fixed elements in the next video, I'm going to draw one out using the rectangle tool, similar to the one I created at the beginning. For this shape, I'll keep the white fill, but remove the border. Next, I'm going to create another repeat grid, but this one's going to contain much more information than the links above. I'll start with a rectangle, which will house the event thumbnails, and then add a few text layers for information such as the date, location, and time. Finally, another rectangle can be placed below the information, acting as a button that viewers will be able to click on. To give this button a touch of style, I'm going to turn off the fill and only apply a border, around 3 pixels, and then round out the edges. This can quickly be done by pulling on any one of the four dots on the inside of the shape. I'm also going to add one more text layer for the name of the button. For now, I'll type out Buy Tickets. Now that this event is blocked out, I'll make sure to name my layers, and then select all the ones I want included in this repeat grid. The thumbnail, all the text layers, and the button. And once selected, Command or Control R will create the grid. And just like earlier, I can pull the handle horizontally and vertically to add additional events, 
and adjust the spacing as necessary. If you need more or less space at the bottom, you can always select your artboard again and adjust the size just like we did before. Wonderful, our wireframing is complete and ready for some visuals, which we'll tackle in the next video, and then we'll touch on sharing and feedback.